so in this part of the video, what we're going to do is have a look at the region of the proximal metacarpus. Uh, we will divide it into zones. So uh, first of all, we'll be checking zone 1A and then moving on to zone 1B and so on. Happy with the way our machine's set up. Got our patient here, nice and calm. And we'll just start off just below the accessory carpal bone. Hey lad, good boy, good chap, good lad. So that's in pretty much position 1A. We're about three or four centimeters below the accessory carpal bone. We've got our image nicely on the screen there. You can see that if I tilt the probe up like that, we lose any kind of image we have of our superficial and deep flexor tendon. If I drop my probe down like that, we pretty much lose everything. So we're aiming to get the best image we can of all of the structures possible. Whoa, lad, good boy. Good chap, good lad. And once we have our picture, we're just gonna freeze that there, and then we can have a look at the anatomy. So right at the top of the screen, that's just under the skin, um, bearing in mind that we're keeping our probe with uh, the marker to the left of the screen, and that's gonna to equate to lateral on the leg. On top of the screen, we have the, the skin, and then we've got a very thin band that constitutes uh, the rem remains of the carpal retinaculum or flexor retinaculum. And then the first big structure we're coming to is the superficial digital flexor tendon. If we have a look, you can see that that's sort of oval shaped. It's a little bit more rounded on the medial side compared to the lateral side. Um, and it's probably slightly hypoechogenic to the stru structure below it. So slightly darker. The structure below it being the deep distal flexor tendon. And again, that's roughly ovoid to, to maybe slightly triangular. And that's actually slightly more rounded on the lateral aspect. You can see from this image, you can't really see the lateral edges uh, of the uh, deep distal flexor tendon and maybe slightly less so the superficial distal flexor tendon. Um, that's, that's normal. It's difficult to get them all on the same image. Um, and we can deal, deal with that by moving the probe slightly laterally um, or slightly medially, depending on which way we are, just to catch those edges. That really enables us to, to fully assess the, the shape and integrity of the, those structures to make sure that we haven't got any damage to the, to the margins of them. Um, if we're coming to doing surface area measurements as we will later on, then we don't actually need to worry. So long as we've got the, the, the bulk of those structures in the shot, we can actually make sensible measurements from that without needing to get the edges in. Immediately below the deep distal flexor tendon, you can see a, a sort of black wedge or triangle in there. And that just represents a small amount of fluid in the remnants of the carpal sheath. So that's sort of uh, the, the distal uh, part of the carpal sheath with a little bit of fluid in it. Below that, we've got a roughly rectangular uh, structure there. Um, and that's the inferior check ligament or accessory ligament of the deep digital flexor tendon. The fibers of that, you can probably see they just look slightly different compared to the fibers in the other uh, three structures. That's because that structure runs slightly obliquely uh, from uh, its palmar attachment proximally to its, um, sorry, for its dorsal attachment proximally to its palmar attachment uh, distally. Um, and so it's, the, the alignment of those fibers is slightly different. It's at an angle to all the other structures, which is why it appears slightly, slightly different. And then immediately below that, we have another rectangular structure, roughly rectangular which is the body of the suspensory ligament, and that's quite cl close up to its proximal uh, origin. The last thing we can see on that image, right at the bottom, is a sort of thin white line, quite bright white line, and that's just the palmar surface of the um, cannon bone, of the proximal cannon bone, or third metacarpal bone. What we then do, um, we'll unfreeze the image. Oh, lad. Get the image, and we'll just come, just move our our probe slightly laterally. You can see that brings that, dis uh, that lateral border of the deep distal flexor tendon into view so that we can check that all is well. But we don't need that, so we'd have that shot if we were going to take cross-sectional area measurements later on. Good lad. Then just going to come down a little bit further. We'll probably drop him down about another three centimetres now. And this is into zone 1B. Good lad. Good lad. Good chap. Stand still, mate. Ooh. Ooh, lad. Uh, uh, uh. Good chap. So here we're about four to seven centimetres distal to the accessory carpal bone. 
And again, much, much the same in terms of structure. Structures that we're seeing, what we'll do, we'll freeze that image. And again, we can have a look. Exactly the same structures that we're seeing there now. Um, just starting to lose the remnants of the uh, flexor retinaculum uh, around the superficial digital flexor tendon. But the superficial digital flexor tendon is still there. Still that slightly hypoechoic appearance with respect to the deep digital flexor tendon. The superficial digital flexor tendon at this stage is just starting to flatten out slightly and become wider. So it's, it's thinner in a dorsal to palmar direction, but it's slightly wider laterally to medially. Next down the image uh, from the top of the screen, again, the deep digital flexor tendon, pretty much as it was before. Still got a little bit of fluid in that carpal sheath there. Below that, the check ligament again, and as with this, the previous image, you can see that those fibers just look slightly different uh, compared to the other three structures. And again, that's because of the oblique nature of that, um, that ligament. And then below that, once again, we've got the, the body of the suspensory ligament. And you can actually see better on this image uh, that thin white line at the bottom, which represents the palmar border of the, of the cannon bone or, or third metacarpal bone.